everybody, it's Brian from Summit Racing here, and in this segment we're going to cover the installation of a camshaft in a Chevy LS engine. Uh, not only that, but we're actually going to cover the timing chain installation as well. There's a lot of tiny details there that you should probably know about before you get into this, and we're going to go through step by step to make sure you know them all. So with that, to get more of these types of videos, be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and all that good stuff. Okay, folks, anytime that you get a new camshaft, you pull it out of the box, uh, it, it, beautiful looking parts. Uh, the Pro LS in particular, you know, they're just crowned to perfection. Uh, the other thing about it is they do have a fine covering of oil on it. That's there as a rust preventative. Uh, you do want to get rid of that oil for the most part. The other thing to be aware of is even though it looks pretty on the outside, no matter what the brand is, what you need to be prepared for is some of the grinding grit and carbide being left on the inside from being core drilled. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and stick this in our handy Summit parts washer. This thing is rolling. What's great about it is you can have it rolled out of the way for the 95% of the time you don't want it in your hair. And for the 5% of the time when you really need it, easily rolls wherever you want to in the shop and just makes everything easy and handy. Not expensive either. Okay, also using our Summit non-chlorinated brake cleaner here. I'm gonna go down through the center. We have these parts brushes to go down through the core of this. And they're sized in a variety of ways so we can get down on the inside of that, come back in and out, give it another shot, do it again. One handy thing you can do is put a white paper towel at the bottom of it and it can show you if it's picking up any grit or grime on the white paper towel. And we're gonna come in and do this from both sides. All right, now you can just pick it up, basically hold it up to the light, and you're gonna get a nice reflection in there of everything through it. And just make sure that you've got any little, it just should look nice and smooth in there. You shouldn't see any grit or grime in there. We're gonna go ahead and move our parts washer out of the way and we're gonna go ahead and get our assembly lube out and go ahead and go over all the cam lobes and all the journals and get it ready for installation inside of the engine. We're gonna go ahead and use our Clevite assembly lube, great stuff. We're gonna go ahead and use it on the cam lobes and the journals. It's a hydraulic roller cam and the fact is, is you could probably even do this with oil but this stuff is not expensive and anything you can do is just gonna be better for it later on down the line. LSs are known for being pretty hard on cam bearings, and so we're just going to go ahead and use this across the board here. And go ahead and get it kind of wiped into the lobes. And on the journals. So why are we using our engine as our parts place? Well, truth is, getting the assembly lube in this thing is not gonna hurt anything. This valley is pretty much closed off from a lot of the things down below it, and anything below it is not gonna get hurt by having some assembly lube on it, namely uh, crank and rods and what have you. All right. This baby is ready to go in the engine. I'm going to go ahead and grab a 3 extension and uh, go through that process next. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a half inch drive. Uh, about a 10 inch extension there is going to go a long way for you. Uh, and we're going to put it down the nose of the cam like so. I'm going to pick our cam up off the motor. And we're going to go ahead and guide it down through the cam bearings. We're going to Kind of rotate it a little bit, just making careful not to hit anything down below it. Getting everything aligned. Okay, now that our second one is in there, I can go ahead and move my hand position back a little bit. As careful as I can. All right, now here's where it gets a little tricky because we're getting down to our last couple cam journals. 
that's no problem because we've done this before. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the tool out. The camshaft is in there. We're going to go ahead and do our cam retainer plate next to make sure it doesn't fall out the front. And then we're going to do our upper timing gear next to make sure it doesn't fall out the back. All right, we've got our ARP cam bolts, or basically the retainer plate bolts, all lubed up with the ARP Ultra Lube. They've got a spec on that of 25 foot pounds. One thing to make sure is you've got it on the threads and on the underhead of the bolt there, reduces friction. I'll go ahead and get these guys started. Like so. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get a speed wrench, get those things zipped down real quick, and I'll show you the torquing process. All right, so we're going to go ahead and torque these to 25 foot pounds in a crisscross pattern. I'm going to do it in two steps, starting off at 12 and a half foot pounds because I can with this nice torque wrench. It won't take me long, I'll just reset this to 25. And we're gonna go ahead and finish them off. All right. Our retainer plate is torqued in, and next step is going to be to go ahead and get our upper timing gear on it. Okay, on the back of our upper timing gear, we have a Torrington bearing here. That's going to go ahead and run up against the retainer plate, and bearings also love assembly lube. Go around that thing a little bit. Make sure they're happy when they get married together. And we're going to go ahead and take our timing chain, hang it on our gear. All right, now what we've done is we've run the lower timing gear up, so basically it's zero. We've got the, the dot is up, you know, we're going to go with this thing as if it's zero. Uh, I doubt if we're going to have to really degree it in or move the thing around once we do it, but uh, always a chance and it's always good to check. So we've also moved the cam around to the point where it needs to be. I'm gonna go on the back of the motor. I've got my fingers on the back of the camshaft. I'm gonna go ahead and push it forward right now. It's not retained by a freeze plug or anything in the back at this point. The gear, I have basically the dot down, dots facing each other. And I'm gonna go ahead and slip it around. All right, at this point, I'm going to check and see if I've got things dot to dot, and I do. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one of our bolts to zip this thing down. It's got the lube. It's dot to dot. And we're going to go ahead and just get it started, and we'll back out, zip it down, show the torque process for it. It's also 25 foot-pounds, just like the retainer plate. One thing I wanted to talk about before we get too much further on this, we haven't even torqued anything down yet. So why do we need a timing chain damper on a performance engine? This is a brand new high performance chain, very little slack here. Uh, the problem is an older chain or a lesser performance chain gets quite a bit more movement in it. And as this thing is going through the RPM range, it's got harmonics, this thing really starts whipping around a lot. Now our later Gen 3 block actually has holes drilled for the plastic wedge style dampener. It's the best option out there. And it basically keeps that chain from having a lot of movement. It doesn't wear out, it doesn't do anything. The later uh, tensioner style, LS3 styles, those actually break. You actually wanna go back to the plastic wedge LS2 two style damper. Trick flow, if you don't have one of the blocks that's drilled, 
There is another option. TrickFlow makes this adapter plate. All it does is it bolts up to the cam retainer plate before you ever put the upper timing gear on. It has the lower bosses here and that allows you to bolt the damper directly on it. So even if you have one of the early, early blocks that wasn't drilled and tapped for a damper, you can still get all the benefit of that LS2 plastic damper. All right, going in 25 foot pounds spec per ARP. We're going to start off with 12 and a half. Okay, run the wrench up to 25. And we're gonna go for final. First one. And final. All right, folks, 25 foot-pounds. We hope you enjoyed that video of the, the cam install, the timing chain install. It's a lot of cool little things here and there. Uh, we've got a lot more upcoming as well, all the way through a completed engine and even running the engine on the dyno. So to see more of these things, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell.